Welcome in to the KSO Show. Mason Voth, Derek Young here with you as we get ready to prepare for K-State and Wichita State as they get game number three of this four-game scheduled series played on Thursday night in Kansas City. Both teams eight and three. Both teams in recent weeks have pretty negative home losses that they're trying to push out of the back of their heads and refocus on the rest of the season. So although there, I think, is still a talent disparity between the two, there are some similarities in how their season has played out. And to this point, I think, um, you know, some questions lingering on both sides about what they are and what to expect moving forward. So, D.Y., I'll, uh, I'll let you start with your general thoughts on this game because this is a, probably a game that's less about facing Wichita State and more about K-State kind of taking care of their own business and finding a way to bounce back after losing to Nebraska five days ago. I would agree. I think this is more about Kansas State. And if they play to their capability, if they play their game, I don't think that they – I wouldn't say it shouldn't have a problem with Wichita State. I think Wichita State is good enough to hang around. But if Kansas State's playing their B game or better, I feel good about where the Wildcats are. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't get that versus Nebraska, um, which was probably a mix of them playing a very poor game and also having the bad luck of not getting anything to drop as well. Because you can shoot bad and still typically shoot better than 16 of 60 from the field. So there is a little bad luck involved. Um, bad combination, right? When you play bad and you also have bad luck. Um, and, that, and that was the imperfect storm that was against Nebraska. I would expect Kansas State to respond and play better. Hopefully that also is associated with their shots falling. If that's the case, I think they should be all right in Kansas City against Wichita State. Maybe something we'll eventually touch on is it, it's hard to – compare or pin down what teams are even as late as December 20th. What we know is that Kansas State's a pretty volatile team where their best basketball is probably capable of defeating just about anyone and their worst basketball is capable of, of, of losing to about anyone. Uh, that's what we know. Wichita State, we don't know a lot. Either they they have some I wouldn't say horrific losses but they have some que a few questionable losses. Mm -hmm. um, although they they hung around with a pretty solid Missouri team, but then you barely beat Southern Illinois at home. You lose to South Dakota State, which gets me to my point is that the best metric we have and and it's not an ideal one. Obviously, I mean it is and it isn't because the transitive property doesn't always. Um, correlate but there is a common opponent between these two teams and it is South Dakota State that Kansas State beat by more than 20 points and that Wichita State lost to at home by one or by yeah. 10 by yeah 10. By, by 10 yeah it, it was a tough showing for them uh and this is a I mean this Wichita State team is weird if you look around their best Ken Palm win right now is a win over Richmond they won 80 to 68 and like you said none of their losses are overly horrific uh, they've lost to Liberty, Missouri, and South Dakota State. And and, Liberty is solid. Yeah. yeah, Liberty's solid. That was a neutral site game in their uh, MTE they played in. Then it was a road game at Missouri, uh, and that was prior to Missouri going on the road and, and battling with Kansas for a little bit. Now, Missouri just had a nasty loss over the weekend in a pseudo home game. They lost in Kansas City to Seton Hall. But that loss at home – well kind of home. It was at Interest Bank Arena downtown in Wichita. That was concerning for Wichita State to lose that game by 10. The place was barely full of fans. Uh, I think it was like 30% capacity. Only 4,000 showed up to that game. Um, Wichita State is in a tough spot right now in terms of where fan engagement is. However, this next week, even though it's been low, I would expect probably a good contingent of WSU fans in Kansas City because Look, the, these games are important to Wichita State. They went forever without getting to play K-State and KU. Now they're getting to do it, and they're going to do both of them in the stretch of basically a week. They play K-State in Kansas City on Thursday, and then next Friday they play KU up in Kansas City. Um, this is a big deal for them, and this is a Wichita State team that we know 
or we assume we know they have a good coach in Paul Mills now who got Oral Roberts to reach, you know, heights that they probably hadn't seen since Bill Self was there and had them in a really good spot. And I, I think kind of looking around and trying to determine what you get out of them is interesting because, look, they – they could have lost to Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois had a shot at the basket, at the buzzer, uh, but Quincy Ballard got came in with a clutch block. I think this is a game that K-State, in all honesty, if you're trying to get people kind of calmed down and back on board and, and not still keeping the negative thoughts of the Nebraska game in the back of your head, this is a game you should go out and handle. And I really think that based on what I think K-State can be, they should win this game by – 15 points on Thursday night. And I don't, I'm not saying they have to go out and do that, but I feel like that should kind of be the expectation because I just, these guys are too talented individually. And I think at some point, Jerome Tang is going to get them together, but these guys kind of have to step up with their actual performances. And, and I think that's probably been the toughest thing so far is that not only is K-State volatile as a team, it, comes from the fact that these players are so volatile where none of these guys have ever been a legitimate number one player in their careers they've all been ancillary pieces to the big players like even Arthur Kaluma who is probably the best player on this team he was at best Creighton's third guy last year behind Baylor Shireman and Ryan Kalkbrenner and honestly you could probably make the case that he was probably fourth in, on that team and you know Tyler Perry has probably been the only one that's been in that position but he did it at North Texas in Conference USA totally different beast and really a, a totally different offense North Texas pretty slow paced and now he's in an offense with Jerome Tang that they want to go fast they want to maximize possessions so it's a different game for him and then we know the guys that are returners for K-State like Cam Carter and David Gasson to some extent, have maybe been asked to do things that they either aren't capable of or have never done in their careers, and it's going to take a long time to get that figured out. But K-State's in a position right now where they don't have much time to get it figured out, and that's why I think you have to take advantage of playing a team that isn't great but isn't horrible in Wichita State on Thursday night. And, and I think this is a uh, an important game for K-State to not only win but come out and play well to win it because you're starting to run out of time for people to think, that these bad performances that are still resulting in wins are going to actually turn into good wins come Big 12 play. I mean, I think LSU is probably the best game K-State's played all season. Villanova, kind of close to that level. Outside of that, I don't know that we can find any other game this season for K-State that matches the level of those two games. Honestly, South Dakota State might be the, the other one that's closest to being in there because they just kind of railroaded the Jackrabbits from the start. I would agree. Something to point out would be that that was a good stretch of basketball by Kansas State, especially in those games against Villanova and LSU. A win over Wichita State does put you at 3-1 and one during that stretch, was, which is what the baseline of what we thought they needed to be, although we probably didn't envision the loss being Nebraska. I get that. But Wichita State hasn't had a stretch of basketball as good as that. So it kind of shows you the gap between the two teams – when they're kind of hitting on all cylinders, so to speak, in my opinion. And I would say Wichita State's probably in the middle of their poorest stretch of basketball this year. I mean, after defeating Richmond, which is probably their best win, I mean, it's good that they hung around, but they lost to Missouri by double digits. They lost at home to Wichita State by double digits, and you barely survived a scare from Southern Illinois. Meanwhile, although Kansas State is coming off a pretty bad loss to Nebraska, just before that was their best stretch of basketball. So mm -hmm. I, I think these two teams are still in a different spot from one another. Yeah, I would agree with that, and I think it's it's important to point out all of that. Uh, in terms of what people should know about Wichita State and, and kind of how K-State might match up with them, we already mentioned Paul Mills. He was on staff at Baylor with Jerome Tang. They were both assistants uh, under Scott Drew. So that uh, will be an interesting thing to watch tomorrow night. I will say I, I much rather see K State have to face, uh, you know, Oral Roberts this season without Paul Mills uh, on on their staff. Even though Oral Roberts still took K State right there to the very end, 
Uh, right. that's, that's a nice thing. And so I'd rather see him coaching Wichita State as he's trying to get this program back on the mend. Yeah, I would agree. What I will say is, interestingly enough, I think this Wichita State team is probably still a little bit better than last year's, if I was to muster yes. a guess, or 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 at least comparable, um, similar. I don't think it's worse than last year's team. Maybe I think I, I will say this: I think this team is probably better uh, for a like a few reasons, and I think that you have kind of number one, you got Isaac Brown out of there. Isaac Brown, I'm sure he's a fine guy and a fine assistant coach, but he was way over his skis and trying to be a head coach right now. Uh, so I think you obviously have a world's better head coach in that position. And I think that you have guys on this roster for Wichita State that are probably a little bit more better connected and willing to play like a team. That was the thing that like last year you look at, you had a lot of guys that were out to kind of get theirs. I mean, I, I think of a guy like Craig Porter, who was on Wichita State's roster last year. He was in the portal. He was going to leave Wichita State until he got a boatload in NIL. So you really think a guy like that is all that bought in last year? Uh, Jaquan Walton is a guy that, look, there were issues there, uh, and he ended up leaving after the offseason. Like, you had a whole lot of guys that I think were out to get theirs and not a very connected roster. Talent-wise, this team might be less for Wichita State, but I think there is a better cohesiveness this year. And I think that you have a better head coach. And ultimately, like that's the kind of thing that is probably the most impactful uh, when talking about is a team better or worse. So you're certainly not going to get um, like a worse Wichita State team than last year. That's not saying that the result can't be better than what it was last year because K-State honestly probably played one of their worst games in that win over Wichita State a season ago. And that's what I was going to point out because interestingly enough, this Wichita State team is – as good or maybe better than last year's Kansas state is team last year, not very far along at this point of the year, mind you, but probably still had better pieces or it do all Americans. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they struggle. So that doesn't, so you take that into consideration. This game could still be tight. Yeah. This is going to be a big game for, from this standpoint for me, Look, I, I think K-State, obviously, they struggled a little bit at times uh, early in the game with Nebraska and making sure they got to guys and they defended shooters from the outside, including, I mean, you had to kind of deal with a, a big man shooting on you uh, in the game with Nebraska because they went out and Rank Mast had a pretty solid game against them and he wasn't afraid to step out and shoot it from range. Wichita State is the same way. He's not connecting on a ton of them right now. But Kenny Poto is one of their four leading scorers. He's in double figures. He's a guy that was at Sunrise Christian. He's been in the program for a long time now. He leads Wichita State in three-point attempts. And that's the kind of thing where, yes, there's volatility, and there's a chance he goes like 0 of 7 from 3 tomorrow night. But that's also one of those where he's going to take them. You have to at least respect that ability. And I think this is where K-State being smart on the floor comes into play. I think so many times early this season, defensive rotations have seemed to step slow and like guys are trying to compute what's going on. They're going to have to be sharp mentally tomorrow night when guarding Wichita State and making sure that they are finding either their man or helping out when something has gone wrong, they got to switch, and there's a guy that's going to be open for a look because Wichita State can spread the floor with the team that they're going to throw out there tomorrow night. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, uh, here's a couple things. Kansas State needs to kind of convince uh, – it's not their responsibility to. Um, so I, I guess I'm probably not finding the right words. But Kansas State needs to assure, prove, and maybe kind of go back to last year where they were able to show that the Butler game was a bit of a fluke. Mm-hmm. The Nebraska game has to be kind of seen as that, a little bit of a fluke, and, and it probably starts against Wichita State. So for me, that that's part of it. The other part of it is because of the way that happened against Nebraska, I think it dropped over 20 spots in Ken Palm. Um, not that Ken Palm is a metric that will be used by the committee, but the net will. And mm -hmm. it still has some of the fluctuations that Ken Palm will or will have as well. And it's probably not too early to think that you got to improve some of those numbers. 
Yeah, last year, K-State's non-con stinker came against Butler, and the very next game out was against Wichita State. Um, Wasn't pretty, as we already mentioned, but K-State found a way to win that game when it looked like maybe they won it. That was significant, and this is the same kind of deal where ultimately, yes, I I would like it, and I think it'd be better for K-State if we got a complete and total performance, you know, K-State's B or A game like we're looking for. But ultimately, if this team just has enough of the resiliency to turn around, come out, wipe the, the loss away, go out there in front of a pretty good crowd in Kansas City and just find a way to win, get you on track, you get an 11-day layoff, and you get a nice little you know comeback from break game against Chicago State before Big 12 play starts, I think everything will kind of go back to normal and people can kind of get past the loss to Nebraska. But K-State can't go out and lose this game. If K-State loses this game tomorrow night, it tells me a couple of things. Number one, it tells me they're not good enough to be an NCAA tournament team this season. And number two, it tells me they're not mentally tough enough to recover from what took place against Nebraska. And honestly, I'll throw in a third thing. It would tell me that they probably don't care enough. And I I think we'll have to see a good performance because there were some things that, that went on during the Nebraska game and after the Nebraska game that I'm not totally on board with with how K-State handled things. And I'm not talking about Jerome Tang. Like I, Jerome Tang, I think, handled it fine, and I'm sure he's done a great job this week because uh, we just know that's the kind of coach and guy that he is. But uh, these guys need to, to kind of show up to, to get some respect back on their names because nobody should, should feel good or have a smile or even think about having a smile since what happened in that, in that Nebraska game because it, it was an embarrassing performance for K-State. And I... I know that the the company line is that shots didn't fall, and that's kind of what uh, Jerome Tang and, and the team have been saying. That game was not about just the fact that shots didn't fall. You were taking not-so-good shots, and there were large stretches where Nebraska was out hustling you. I think Drew said it best after the game, where when you play hard and you hustle, the ball is going to take those funky bounces to your advantage eventually. And that's how Nebraska was able to get the edge in that game. It just felt like Nebraska wanted it more. And in terms of how they actually played, I mentally K state probably wanted that game just as much, if not worse than Nebraska. But I think that that was the kind of game that had to give K state that mental reset to where they understand now, Oh, we actually have to go out and do this. It's not just going to come to us because we're K state because we're this Big 12 team, because we had a great fan base behind us in Bramlage on Sunday, we have to go out and do it. And that's what that's what this team has to go out and do on Thursday night. And more specifically, the players have to go out and do that. Because the performance on Sunday, that's not on Jerome Tang. Maybe overarching theme for the season, some of the struggles, you could say maybe he needs to change something up stylistically with his coaching this year. I'm not ready to go that far yet. I think this is more so about his players and finding the the level of give a damn that they have and how they're going to bounce back and their focus. And Wichita State is a really good opportunity because you're going to have an awesome crowd behind you. It's going to be, you know, different environment, going to feel a little bit more big time going to Kansas City, playing in a new big arena. This is a good opportunity for K-State. Number one, to make me sound like an idiot for all the things I just said over the last four minutes. Because I would much welcome that. Like that's that's totally fine. That's what I want. But right now, like I'm back on that that wagon where I've just got kind of the heebie-jeebies feeling about this K-State basketball team right now, and I desperately want to be proven wrong. But I, I just won't know until we see what it looks like after the final buzzer sounds tomorrow night in T-Mobile Center. I can see that. To be fair, I, I think in the middle of some of those explanations by Jerome Tang after the game. I do think he did say at one point that Nebraska wanted it more. I do think yeah. that. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see uh, kind of what comes out of it and where things go. But this is, uh, this is a good opportunity for K-State. And as we know, this is a uh, a big game in terms of those of us, more so that live in the uh, South Central region of the state of Kansas, a lot closer to those nasty Shocker fans. Uh <laughs> You got to put you got to put Wichita State in their place. Uh, they are nowhere near your level. Don't let them think they they are near your your level. Whether it's for this year's one off team or for the the history of the two programs, K State is shoulders above Wichita State. They are peasants to the Kings that K State is. Let them know that. Make them feel terrible. Spoil their Christmas. 
Put on the Grinch costume after the game if you're Jerome Tang and go steal their presents. Do whatever you have to do. Make this a terrible year for Wichita State and make them be set up for another big disappointment the week later when they play KU. Because, look, I very rarely do I publicly support the University of Kansas. K-State, go out and win this game on Thursday, and the Jayhawks have my full support next weekend when they face Wichita State. I want K-State and KU to win this these games by a cumulative, like, 55 points. Put it to them. Put them in their place. Let them know that they are nothing because they are just gum on the bottom of the Big 12 shoes that we towed around in the middle of this state. So kick their butts, please, because this is the one game that I have died my whole life for to get, and I cannot have game number three of this series be a loss. Games one and two made me shake in my boots. Shout out to Marquise Noel for game number one. Shout out to everybody for just figuring it out last year to win it. Somebody step up and be my savior in game number three and smack the woo shocks all the way around. I just, I cannot stand these guys. I hate them. And I don't, I don't hate the people at Wichita state. I don't hate the players, whatever. Just their fans are the worst. I, I, I don't know that I know a Wichita state fan that I like. I really don't uh, because they're just so arrogant for no reason. Like congrats. You won four games in a row. Uh, Way to go. You, you've won four games in a row. That's that's all you got going for you. So there you have it. Hey, I, I like the rant. I, uh, I enjoyed that. One thing that I will say before we probably get to some of the predictions and stuff is that something to keep in mind moving forward is maybe what the lineups look like for Kansas State. Not to say that. Jerome Tang will throw out a different starting lineup, at least not. No, he might, but um, I wouldn't. I'm not going to project that or say that has to happen. But they're they're two big lineup, which I mean when they have David Gasson and Will McNair on the floor together, is a lot less efficient, at least on the offensive end, than when they go to maybe a, a more three guard look where they can put Arthur Kaluma at the four. And obviously, you can't do that too much because your two point guards that are available right now are Day Day and Tyler Perry. Um, one of them sometimes has to be off the floor because you're trying to conserve energy a little bit there. You can't play both 40 minutes, right? So I get it. Um, so they're they're trapped into having to play Gasson and Will McNair together a bit. But I wonder if that becomes less or should become less than something they focus on because some of those lineup combinations right now are – at least statistically showing, you know, blinking red, red lights as to what works and what isn't. But again, some of that is personnel wise because Naquan Tomlin ain't walking through that door and Quez Glover's mm-hmm. hurt. But when Quez Glover comes back, then maybe that becomes more frequent because they're so much better offensively right now when Day Day Ames is on the floor and the stats bear that out. And you could say, oh, maybe that's Day Day, which I'm not saying it's not. I think Day Day's, you know, doing what he's doing for a true freshman, and he's fine. But more than anything, I think it's because when you have Day Day on the floor, more than off, more likely than not, it's also Tyler Perry and Cam yeah. Carter, too. And then Arthur Columbus, the four. You're not really playing with two bigs. Yes. You you have problem with spacing when you're at both David Gasson and Will McNair out there. And when you have them both out there, you the defense – you become easier to guard for that defense, I think, just because David Gasson is playing the four. He's not proven so far this year that he could space the floor. Now, last year he was five of ten from the three point line, and I think I think a lot of it's in his head. He's probably a better three point shooter than he showed. Right now, he can't hit the rim, but that's a mental hurdle at this point. It's a confidence thing, like Jerome Tang has said. And until then, then you you kind of have a hard time on the floor because you're playing both of them just become easier to guard. So something something to watch over the next couple of weeks because I don't know if that, that can change overnight, but is to maybe play more three-guard looks. Yeah, I, it's, it, I, I think that's a good way of putting it where it's, it's not necessarily because of what Day-Day Ames is doing. It really is more of just a, a flow and a philosophy type thing to where that's why I think it works better. And for that to happen – 
it does require Dede Ames to play of a certain caliber to where Jerome Tang feels like he can keep him on the floor because you can't do it if Dede Ames isn't capable of producing to a level at least to where you're comfortable having him on the floor still. And so you're going to have to kind of figure out how to do that and and how that works out. Um, and look, like – Offensively, Wichita's- it's offensively it's a lot better right now. And obviously yeah. that's probably less Dede and more just not too big on the floor. I get it. But offensively, it's better when Dede is on the floor right now. And the stats bear that out. You maybe start to wonder, you get a little anxious about how much of that can work your defense, though. Mm-hmm. But the, the defensive numbers aren't too drastically different. Yeah. And look, Wichita State, they're a team that they they're their most frequently used lineup. The 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 five guys that are on the floor 31% of the time together. The you have two bigs, tr- two true bigs that are 6'10 and 6'11. But then the other three guys are 6'4, 6'2, and 6'5 that are on the floor. K-State can match up with that. And that includes Kenny Poto at the four, who, like I said, he's going to drift around the perimeter quite a bit. So in theory, I think this should be a game where K-State could utilize the three-guard lineup a little bit more. And then, honestly, it probably just comes down to what do you feel like gives you the best opportunity uh, in terms of who that five is? Is it Gasson or is it McNair? And I guess that's that's the question I'll ask you is, wh- which do you think, if you're going three guards and then Kaluma's the four, who should be the five out there to give K-State their best opportunity? Because right now, I – I, I think it's McNair because he's less of an offensive liability. And, I mean, this team's coming off a game where they just struggle to score. I, I think you have to deal with some of the bad that McNair can bring and let him be out there and be that fifth guy if you're trying to accomplish something offensively. Although, I will be open to the fact that if you have three guards out there and creation's maybe a better opportunity, then I don't have the biggest problem with Gasson because he's proven to be, when you give him the opportunity, he can finish there. Uh, it would just concern me if he has to handle the ball too much, and also if he gets fouled and goes to the free throw line, you're you're losing a possession right there. Yeah, I would say it's probably more matchup dependent, obviously, between McNair and Gasson because they're two different styles. Um, I understand the offensive liability talk there too, but Dave Gasson much less of an offensive liability when he's playing the five because um, you're asking him to do something different in that role rather than play the four. Here's here's the problem is. How much of that can you actually do? Because if you want to go three guards, Arthur Kaluma, big, how many minutes can you play Arthur Kaluma? Because you can't – I mean, you can maybe play him 35 minutes, so then there's five minutes there where you can't do that, right? Yeah. And how many minutes can you play Kim Carter and Tyler Perry, right? You can't play them. So then it starts to whittle away the minutes that you can actually go three guard. That's why getting Quez Glover back will be key. Yeah, that's a good point, and that's probably a, a good way to end it for big picture thoughts on K-State and everything. That's where the Quest Glover thing can be a lot more significant. I think that's a good reminder. It's a good reminder for me even to think about that because that is going to change a lot of the way that K-State can handle the flow of a game, and uh, we'll see kind of what his contribution ends up looking like. And and it, it would be nice if um, if R.J. Jones you know, could, could start to give you more minutes and – be nice to get and if Buddy can do that as well. Now, mm-hmm. Michaela Bridge, he's kind of a small ball four, doesn't really give you a spacing opportunity either, but he's a different kind of he gives you something different too. So it, it's they're still figuring this thing out. Well, and you know, honestly, if he goes out there and, and he just plays hard and gives you good minutes right now, like that's honestly what you just need at times. And I, you know, I I think you could make a case that maybe what he gave in the Nebraska game was maybe one of the more – I mean, it was not an inspiring performance by anybody, but he probably was number one in terms of, okay, I can take something slightly positive away from the way that he played. All right, uh, let's let's go into our predictions here. Uh, What do you think the final score and outcome is tomorrow night? It's probably a game – this used to be a Wichita State game that really wanted to muck it up. I think they're less that way, but still probably see that as an avenue to win. Kansas State's due for a strong shooting performance. You know, I, I'm hoping, I guess we'll see something, maybe 76, 69, K-State. Okay. Well, Ken Palm has it, K-State, 74 to 69. I, I just, I don't think, 
K-State can get into the 80s. I just don't know that this is going to be that kind of game, but kind of like you're saying. It might be due. This team is kind of due, and this is going to be such a big one for them. Uh, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the Cats 81. To, I'm going to say 69 as well for Wichita State. I think that's probably a, a good spot for them to reach. Hold them just shy of 70. Do your thing. So 81, 69, and obviously it would depend on how you get to that number, but there's uh, a pretty much – good chance that if they if k-state wins by that i'll be pleased and i'll have good things to say after the game but we'll just have to wait and see how it all plays out tomorrow night in kansas city k-state and wichita state what are we doing 7 30 tip come on 7 30 on a thursday night think of the children k-state athletics come on or the media <laughs> or the media or anybody really just think of anybody 7 30 why uh I, I'm sure there's a reason behind it, and I'm sure whoever made that decision is probably like, well, actually, I don't care. Figure something out better for that. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens there. And uh, Cats looking to win their third straight in this series against Wichita State in terms of uh, everything else when you consider the, the restart of it. K-State hasn't lost to Wichita State since 2001. I was three years old when that happened. So, uh, again, go out there, finish them off. KU football has beaten K-State more in the last 13 years than Wichita State has beaten K-State in basketball. And we know KU has been historically bad against K-State in football. So just a sad, sad number there to figure out. Last two meetings have been pretty mucky between the two teams. Honestly, if you go through the series history, this has not been like an entertaining or visually pleasing basketball game because uh, you can even go back to the last time they played before uh, they restarted playing each other in 2003 k-state won the game 54 to 50 uh and yeah wichita state hasn't scored more than 50 uh in the 50s since 2002 when they beat k-state so uh or when they lost to k-state the, the win was in 2001 so we'll see how it goes a lot of things thrown your way there throwing me off that will do it for us though for Derek young i'm mason both make sure you keep checking out everything at k-state online uh, today was football signing day, so plenty of coverage over there on this class and each individual member, and also some breakdowns on the YouTube as well. We will have immediate reaction after the game tomorrow night here on the YouTube as well as at K-State Online, and a good time to get signed up and be a member at KSO if you're not already. So we are out of here. Next time you will hear from us is after K-State and Wichita State play their game in Kansas City.